In this problem, we're given a pretty good sized data set, and then we're asked about first quartile, third quartile, and there is a second quartile, it's also called the median, uh, but we're not asked about the median here, the inner quartile range, and then the lower fence and upper fence separating the outliers from the usual values. Now on this, uh, I'm gonna go and look at the note page. So we're in chapter two. So in here, first quartile is the 25th percentile. Third quartile is the 75th percentile. Uh, now again, this question didn't ask about the median, but it's the center of the data. It's the middle value or the 50th percentile. And we're also asked about interquartile range. Um, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but what I want to use here is the percentile uh, function in Excel. So we're going to use Excel to do this. So let's go ahead and get all of these values into Excel. Uh, I don't recommend overwriting uh, things. But I did this earlier and I'm going to overwrite it. Uh, remember, you can be opening up new sheets right here. Just hit that plus button to get to a new sheet. Um, I'm labeling them with the problem I'm working on. This is 2.3.8. So I'm going to paste in all of these values. You can sort them, but if you do sort them, it's going to take some time. Uh, I'm going to sort them very quickly. So I highlighted half of them. And again, I left clicked and dragged. You can also click the bottom left one and then a bottom right one and then hold down shift and click the upper left to get that. Change the cursor so it's the uh, black up down left right arrows. I'm going to move this whole chunk of data down here. And from here now I can get this entire column and then I'm going to move this whole column down to here. Now I'm going to, using the shift key, move this whole column way down. Oh boy. Sometimes it scrolls crazy fast. You gotta be careful. I'll put it right here and then get it in position. All right, so now I got all the values here. I can scroll out, get them all on the screen. Again, if you can't get them all on, on the screen, you just click the last one, scroll up to the top, and then shift, click the first one. Uh, gets them all. And now I'm gonna go sort, smallest to largest. Now, I could pick the middle value here. Uh, I have 54 values, uh, so the middle value, 54. So that's 25, 26, 27. But I believe there's two middle values, and I think it would be these two added, uh, averaged together. There's a much better way using Excel to do all these calculations. So I'm gonna use the percentile calculation in Excel. So we're gonna go over here. This is Q, oops, Q1, Q1 to 25th percentile. Q2, even though this question didn't ask for Q2. 50th, Q3 is the 75th. Uh, we'll do the interquartile range in a minute. All right, first one, you're gonna use the percentile. So I just typed PER. It is important that you use the um, exclusive. So I'm hitting the tab key to select it. You can also double click on the one you want, but I'm using the tab key. Now it needs an array, and an array is just a bunch of cells, so I'm left clicking and dragging. Now, I'm just gonna hit enter here. Oops, we also need a percentile. So, comma, 0.25. All right, so the 25th percentile, remember it's not 25, it's 0.25, you can also go 0 0.25. All right. So that's definitely gonna be wrong because, uh, oh, look at that, I only went A14 to A27. So that's very not correct. I didn't start at the top, nor did I go to the bottom. So the very first one is A1. Now I'm gonna hit enter. Now I'm double clicking here to get back into the formula and it should highlight 
in blue every cell that I'm using. So I'm A1 to A27. Remember the last one was A54. You can scroll down and verify that. Yours may not be 54, but my last one is 54. So I'm just gonna type 54. You can now scroll down. I see that exactly ends at the 54th cell. And now I can hit enter. So this should be quartile one, Q1, 396.6. And submit. Okay, that's Q1. Uh, I'm gonna compute Q2 and Q3 now. So, if I just take this copy, which is Control C and paste Control V, you can see this keys are pressing lower right corner of the screen. Uh, what happened here? Uh, it shifted it down. Uh, so it goes from A2 to A55. I don't want it to go down. A couple ways you can fix it. You can move the cursor over here so it's the up down arrows and I can try to carefully shift it up one. I'm looking at the formula changing. If you look at the formula it's changing right now as I move it, I want it to be A1 to A54. So that's one way to fix it. That's a fine way to fix it, but there's a better way. Let's go back to what we started with. I'm gonna move this down, so I want the one and the 54 to not change. So you can put the dollar sign in front of those. This means when you move this formula, the one and the 54 will not move. Uh, I could lock down the column if I wanted to with another dollar sign, and then no matter if I move it left or right, it still won't change. So hitting enter. Now I can hit this. I can do copy paste. I can also get to the lower right corner with this black plus and drag it down. Now I have the exact same thing here and here, but the only difference is I want the 50th and the 75th percentile. So double click. Instead of the 25th, I want the 50th, 0 0.50, enter, and then 0.75. Enter. So again, all I did was I just went in and adjusted that right there. I think if you move the screen over, it'll get it all on one line. Uh, so it's not splitting it across multiple lines. All right, so this is Q3. They're not asking about Q2, only Q3. 547.8. All right, submit. Submit. What's going on? All right, so we got that. All right, interquartile range. So this is in the textbook. Uh, I believe I put this on the formula page as well. Somewhere in here, interquartile range IQR is the difference between Q3 and Q1. So I'm gonna do Q1 minus Q3. IQR equals uh, well, if I do, it's the big minus the small. If I do it the other way around, I'll get a negative value. So Q3 is 547 minus Q1, 396.6, 151.2. And I hit enter to submit. I don't know if that'll work in the interface you're using, but you can always hit submit. All right, that gives me the intercourse aisle range. Next up, we have to do the fences. So the way we're gonna do the fences, that's what separates outliers from regular or usual values. And here we have fence somewhere. A value is a potential outlier. So I didn't have the word fence in here. Uh, so this, these are fence values. All right, if it is less than 1.5 times IQR below Q1, so that's the lower fence. So we're gonna do IQR times 1.5, and then I wanna make that amount below quartile one. So I'm gonna do IQR times 1.5, and I'll do that computation here. So that's IQR times 1.5, all right? 
226.8. So lower fence, uh, this was quarter one, Q1, so equals Q1 minus the value we just computed. So it's the IQR times 1.5 below Q1. So we get that by doing Q1 minus IQR times 1.5. Oops, lower fence, upper fence, and that is the same, only slightly different. So upper fence or more than IQR times 1.5 above Q3. So we're going to start with Q3 and then add 1.5 times IQR. equals Q3 plus IQR times 1.5. And those values right there are the lower and upper fence. There we go. All right, some questions are gonna ask you to count uh, how many outliers there are. So I did put this data set in order. If I was gonna count, um, we'll do lower, lower outliers and upper outliers. So lower outliers are below 169.8. This is in order, so I can scroll to the top and I see, oh, there's nothing even close to 169.8. So I have no lower outliers so nothing is really low here and do I have any above 177.4 and I get a bit closer but I don't have anything above uh, 774 so that is still below 774 so I have no outliers in this data set but other questions will have outliers and so sometimes you need to compute these right here and then look at your data and count um, how many values uh, or some questions are going to say which values are outliers and that's exactly how you do it.